Welcome to Ash Chess Arts. So today I'm gonna do another bracket battle. This time, uh, different sight and sound ballots are gonna battle against each other. So we have eight directors here and their top ten ballots, and they're gonna fight against each other. So I'm gonna look at each director's list and then see which list I prefer the most. Some of these directors also left comments about their choices, but I think it would make this video too long if I read all of them. But if you are interested, you can find that information on VFI's website. But we are going to start with a battle between Alex Cox and Peter Greenaway. So, I don't, I'm not going to talk about these films that much, but we'll just compare the lists. And obviously, in the comments, you can say which list you like the most. But like I said, there are sometimes are comments here on the lists, but I'm not going to read them out. But we have Il Caso Matte or The Matai Affair by Francisco Rossi. Then we have 2001 Space Odyssey, Ikiru, Come and See, Citizen Kane, The Exterminating Angel, The Wages of Fear, The War Game, For a Few Dollars More, and Killer of Sheep. So I think this is a very solid list. I like all of these films, and I also liked the variety here. So we have a war film, we have a sci-fi film, we have a western, then kind of these independent, low-budget stuff like Killer of Sheep, and we have Unwell's crazy stuff. So lots of great directors here, lots of different type of stuff here, and yeah. Not really any complaints here. Of course, I don't absolutely adore all of these films, but like I said, I like all of them, and I think they all deserve to be considered to be like great, great movies. Yeah, no really big complaints here. I mean, it's interesting that he went with for a few dollars more instead of some of the more famous Leone westerns like okay, the Cutie Pat and the Ugly, and then. Once upon a time in the West, and of course with Kurosawa, you could go with many different films, same with Kubrick, even with, same with Bunuel, yeah. But Green Away is one of my favorite filmmakers, and I like his list overall, although there are a couple of weird picks. But we have last year at Marion Bard, Eight and a Half, Citizen Kane, The Seventh Seal, Ivan the Terrible, Throne of Blood, Breathless, Blade Runner, Gladiator, Choose a Jim. So I think overall, really great list, but I kind of disagree with the Ridley Scott picks. Although Blade Runner I can understand, but Gladiator I really don't understand how you can have it in the same top 10, top 10 as something like 8.5, for example, or last year at Marion Pan. But, but yeah, it's glad, I'm glad to see these great French directors here. With Kurosawa again, I think Throne of Blood is one of his best films. Bergman, Wells, Fellini, N.A., yeah, but the Ridley Scott picks rub me a wrong way a bit, yeah. And of course with many of these directors too, you can, you can say that should these films be the ones on a top 10 or not, but I think these are all very understandable choices, again, except Gladiator. But due to the Ridley Scott thing, I'm gonna go with Alex Cox, yeah. Then we have Atom and Goyan versus James Gray. So we have, or James Gray, 2001, Citizen Kane, The Godfather, Eight and a Half, The Leopard, or Death, Playtime, Raging Bull, Tokyo Story, and Vertigo. So kind of a generic list, but in a good way, because of course all of these films are great films, of course, um, but Playtime is something that I've never kind of got them myself, although I can totally understand why other people love it, and I do love it from an aesthetic point of view, but then I don't really like anything else about it. Then Raging Bull is really good, but I've never understood the hype fully. Godfather I've kind of gotten a bit bored of, but it's obviously a great movie. And then yeah, it's a very standard list, or that I think is a big masterpiece. Vertigo, it's great to see that. Do you see that in millions of lists, but but yeah, really good list overall. And Atome Goyan's list is pretty standard for the most part, especially the first half here. Polar of Pomegranates is maybe a bit of an 
weirder be called obviously I think it's definitely a deserving film but you don't see that in every list but I love to see that type of kind of visual feast painterly cinema in these lists because those type of films really show the potential of the medium I think and Boot Hawaii was obviously very high in the critics poll great movie Persona and Vagabond I think Anies Varda has made better films than that but it's still good yeah, but no big complaints here. I think it's a very solid list. Uh, yeah, this is actually very hard. They are even like fairly similar, pretty like cookie cutter lists. But I think I'm gonna go with Atom Egoian. In the end, I think it's just a slightly better list, maybe. Then we have two very popular current directors. So we have Ari Aster versus Robert Eggers. So first, Ari Aster's list. Vertigo, Eight and a Half, Barry Lyndon, Raging Bull, Late Time, Shansho the Bailiff, Persona, a very standard up, up until that point, but then it had the Coen Brothers movie, A Serious Man, which isn't something that you would expect from this list. I mean, you can expect a Coen Brothers film, but not this one. But I, I like it, but I don't think it's this level of good. Show is an obvious, but a great pick. Then, Songer from Andra Woningen. By Roy Anderson, his most famous film, which is really good. Although I don't think it's quite this level of good. But yeah, again, for the most part, very you know, standard choices. I'm really glad to see Sean Show the Bailiff. But it is on my ballot as well. So his persona is always vertical. And eight and a half could easily be on my ballot too. So I show what was on my ballot. Did I say that already? But yeah, very good list. Then Eggers list, Andre Rublev, The Elephant Man, Seven Samurai, The Treasure of Sierra Madre, Apocalypse Now, 2001, Nosferatu, The Murnau Version, Fitzcarraldo, The Passion of John of Arc, and Persona. So I think all are quite deserving films, although with David Lynch, I would have gone with some of his more weirder films. And I think for classic Hollywood, Sierra Madre is up there with the best. And I also like this version of Nosferatu the most. Fitzcarraldo could be Herzog's best film. And with Trier, you can of course go with two different films, but I would probably go with The Passion of Shaun of Arc as well if I voted for a Trier film. Yeah. But a really good list. Yeah, I think I'm actually gonna go with this against um this Ari Aster list, both are good lists, but I think the Coen Brothers choice is a bit, bit too weird for me. Yeah. Then the last matchup of the first round, it's Celan versus Carpenter. So Carpenter's list, only angels have wings. Then this one is uh, Chimes at Midnight by Orson Welles. Then we have Rio Bravo, then we have the this green charm of the bourgeoisie. Then we have Chinatown, Bringing Up Baby, The Searchers, The Exterminating Angels, Scarface, again the Hawks version, not the De Palma version, then Vertigo. Yeah. So lots of great films here. I don't think Hawks is this level of good that he deserves to have four films in a list. I mean, he's a good director and I can understand why you would put Hawks in, but I wouldn't put like four films from the same director. Um, and he has actually gone down in my estimation as it's a bit too kind of troglodyte type of cinema for my current taste, but I still like his films, but I don't adore them the same way I used to. And I think this is a very solid Punuel choice. This to me is one of Welsh's best films. And what else? Yes, The Searchers is great. Yeah. This, in a way, is for the most part, maybe a bit too kind of okay, cookie cutter for my taste, a bit too troglodyte, but overall, pretty solid list. Then, Celan, we have Mirror and Andre Rublev, so two Tarkovsky films. I would call it Stalker, but those are good choices as well. Then, we have Tokyo Story, A Man Escaped, which definitely could be my Presson choice, although with Presson, it's hard to say. Then, we have Barryman's Shame, his war film, 
absolute masterpiece. Then we have Leclis by Antonioni. Understandable Antonioni choice, a masterpiece. Then we have through the Olive Trees by Kierostami. I think it's the weakest of the Google Trilogy, but still a masterpiece. Then I think this was Death from uh, Mr. Lazarescu in English or something like that. And yeah, it's a good movie, but I don't think it's this level of good. Then we have Ming Liang's Vive l'Amour, which is really good, one of his more popular films, but I like a couple of his other films more. And Stranger Than Paradise by Charmus has never been like a film that I really love. I think it's good, but not great. But yeah, many really great films. It's especially like really solid. Uh, like the first seven films are really solid. Especially, yeah. But I think I like Celan's list more and it has a bit more variety as well. So I'm gonna go with Celan. Then we have Alex Cox versus Atom Egoyan. Um, so let's refresh our minds what the films were. So here you can see the Alex Cox list, Alex Cox list, and the Egoyan list. Oh, it's pretty hard actually. Um, I think I like the Egoyan list a little more. Oh, these are so hard actually. Egger versus Celan. Yeah, really good list. This is really solid list. Um, um, yeah, I think I like the Eggers list a bit more. And then we have Eggers versus Alex Cox. So, um, Yeah, I'm gonna go with Eggers. But let me know which one of these is your favorite list, and I might make more of these in the future. We'll see. And I might change the approach how I go through these lists a bit. As I feel like maybe I should talk about the list a bit more or a bit less. You know, you never know, but I will see how this video turns out. And you can also leave me feedback on that. But thanks for watching. Don't drink all the coke. Sayonara and arigato gozaimasu.